Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital's Daily Analysis video. I'm your head market analyst here, Curtis Skelton. Jumping into the charts on this Thursday, October 13th. What a wild, wild session it was indeed. A terrific, terrific fake out, shake out, and then a gap or a straight rally to the upside, which pretty much finished near the highs of the day, as you can see on the daily chart. So it was a, an epic, epic bear market bounce and reversal. And the reason why this is such an epic reversal is just the sheer power of the markets being up 2.64% on the day and the fact that you gap down substantially from 356 to about 348, which was about a 2% move down, gap down, and you still managed to rally from that point on. So what an epic, epic reversal. And this is why we were accumulating longs. This is why pre-market we were ready to buy because in the grand scheme of things, why was I optimistic to buy things? Well, we were coming into some key, key support. I mean, you have these major, major support zones over here. There's three big levels. Um, obviously, you didn't hit the final level, which is what we're going to be discussing here. Let me just turn off this volume here just so I can get the charts better. But um, the reason why this pattern is so crucial now and why I still think this market is ultimately bearish because let's just keep in mind we triggered our topping formation here our head and shoulders we have not fulfilled that downside pattern which is roughly down over here at 346 we came very very close but since we did not fulfill that pattern it makes me assume on a technical basis that we now have an epic trading range to make a decent amount of money off of by buying um, support, which is what we did today, and shorting resistance. So everything inside of this yellow line now is all bearish consolidation. And we may be able to consolidate for a little bit, but let's keep in mind the CPI, the headline number reduced, came in at 8.2%. But the critical aspect of why these markets are going to go lower and there's more pain is because even though the headline number is subsiding, core CPI rose and that is what the Fed primarily looks at. So if the markets continue to rally up, which I do think we can squeeze maybe another day or two at the minimum, generally after a massive reversal, kind of a fake breakdown and a reversal to the upside, um, it generally consists of a little bit of a pause, but considering it's Friday, many people might be overly optimistic considering that you're most likely to hear on the news and the mainstream media that the lows are in uh, just due to the fact that how big of a level this is. If we flip to the weekly chart, we can see how big of a level this is. You're hitting the weekly 200 MA. As a technical analyst, these are the levels which is why we started accumulating heavily at these technical levels. And because it's rare that you hit this MA. And when you do, there's algorithms and funds program to just buy long because generally over the long term, every time you get a long term buying opportunity to accumulate at the weekly 200 moving average, yes, there's a chance within the next 12 months that you can go down. But if someone's outlook and horizon is about five to 10 years, this is an epic opportunity to buy considering that markets tend to usually go up. Now, I still think they're going lower. I still think we have to fulfill this COVID high, but it's going to, there's going to be the bounces along the way. And you can see how much support that was, even if we look on the Q's, uh, Q's weekly, also teetering that weekly 200. So you have not been able to close and confirm below. That is what we're watching here. Right now, if the Q's push up and close back above that, that is kind of a failed breakdown. And it should imply there's more upside in the near term. But let's just keep in mind this is a bear market. So the SPY, all of this is inside this new range that we can trade. Basically, if the markets keep getting more upside, um, we're going to be looking to offload our longs pretty soon here and accumulate short positions on the indices. So the first resistance that I see here is coming up pretty quickly. You know, we almost met that resistance today, but it's a little bit higher. So that's going to be your first level, which is why I think we could potentially consolidate. Um, but yet again, bear market bounces tend to be ferocious and short lived, and then they usually come back in. Um, but needless to say, there is the potential of us now trading inside of this high over here to this low over here until we meet and, and fulfill this downside pattern. 
Um, so let's just continue to monitor how the S&P reacts intraday. Let's just go to the intraday action to show you what type of reversal. You know, this is the type of reversal we got as the dollar exploded higher, as yields exploded higher on the back of that CPI. It was pretty amazing because my account, considering I had longs on the table beforehand, you know, it was about a $10,000 swing this way. And then we started buying and buying and buying more. And then all of a sudden, I rallied back and gained back all of those losses and then some because we accumulated at the lows of, of amongst a variety of different positions. You know, we bought things like more Newmont, we bought more Mullen, we bought SMH, AMD, Nvidia, um, XPEV, UBT, STNE, Spotify, AMD. So there were a variety of different positions that we offloaded and it's truly, truly an, what an impeccable buy. That's what happens, you have to check out the fear. I hated this drop this morning because we had a decent amount of long exposure, but when the markets are oversold into key technical areas and you start seeing massive accumulation, which is what we saw on the previous day, it just means that you're still likely to get that technical bounce even after a piece of news because the markets um, adjust very quickly and these equities we're already positioning for a higher yield, even though it didn't really um, show it on the bond market. So with that understanding in mind, I think we do get a little bit more upside, but be ready to uh, offload a lot of that long exposure. If we take a look at the Qs, the Qs is into massive, massive um, support. Just give me, bear with me as the chart loads. You can see these massive pivots over here. So you had a technical gap fill over here. You had this consolidation support bounce, check back, kind of bounce again, support over there, you have this massive pivot. So these again are the levels that when you're in an oversold condition from 333 all the way down to 254, you have to be able to buy even when the markets are looking extremely, extremely fearful. So again, this is the new range that we could trade in. Um, I can see the queues potentially now getting to this gap fill. Um, obviously, I don't think it's going to happen tomorrow, but maybe over the course of a few days. But again, there's going to be tons of resistance up ahead as we start to move higher. And you can see that as you intersect with that gap fill, just before that gap fill is going to be this down sloping trend line, which will be acting as massive, massive resistance. If we take a look at oil, oil is an interesting chart. First, we're going to look at the WTI and then I want to show you the USO. So the WTI, um, basically you've got that retrace back to the breakout zone over here. And now the interesting thing is that even with an epic broad based rally, oil on a volume basis, so let me just throw on the volume, still did not have a bigger volume candle, even though it did have a bigger range move um, compared to yesterday, which makes me think that this, this, this bounce is going to be short lived in oil as well as probably the rest of the market. So um, considering that the volume trends are still in favor of the downside, uh, that makes me a little skeptical, but with oil, um, you could get a float up to the top end of this channel. Uh, that's pretty much going to be your next big resistance level before rolling over. I want to show you USO because USO is an intriguing chart. So USO, you can see that you had this down sloping parallel channel, which you've tested over here, pivot high, and then you broke out of, but you never ever confirmed above it. And the reason why you stopped at resistance there is you have this trend line, pivot to pivot to pivot to pivot zone, and you checked back off that level. And now the really, really cool thing on a technical basis and what fascinates me, intrigues me so much, and, and this is why we're able to put the odds in our favor and read the charts by knowing how candles form and what they mean. But when you have a failed breakout because you did not confirm outside of this down sloping parallel channel, and you've actually now had a three bar pullback, which reconfirmed back inside of this original range. Now you're potentially getting a fake pop back out of this range, but you since you've technically confirmed back in this range, after this little bounce, the probabilities dictate that you do roll over and head back to the low end of this range over time. So that's kind of what I'm seeing for oil. Um, I'm still holding on to some of our oil shorts. The energy sector was pretty strong today. 
Natural gas also is up on the day. You can see that it has not confirmed below this trend line. So that is a critical, critical aspect to keep watching. If natural gas can confirm back above this line, there is a likely scenario we can see a move to the 820 level or this, this upsloping neckline. And that would be a key pivotal area to potentially short if we got a pretty good rate of change move into that area. If we take a look at the DXY, the DXY is an intriguing chart as well. Um, let me just flip to the daily. So the daily chart, you can see a nasty, nasty reversal. Uh, what I find interesting about the DXY is you finish down 0.71%. Obviously, there's two hours left, but you've basically started a potential daily confirmation back below this yellow trend line. And the really, really interesting thing about that is it sends you right back down to this channel, which does imply another 1% or 1.5% drop in the dollar, which should ignite another upside move in the indices. And if you think about how much the dollar pulled back today, that was the only reason the markets rallied, because the markets did not rally because yields were pretty much higher. The markets rallied because the dollar pulled back, and there was still that inverse correlation, a high inverse correlation that was going on intraday tick for tick. As you can see, the move on the S&P was basically inverse this move. So I'm actually going to pull up a cool intraday chart of the S&P just so everybody can see what, what transpired here. So you can see that on the S&P, when the dollar rallied, and you can follow along with the cursor, it shows on both. When the dollar was rallying, look at the move on the S&P, practically identical. But as the dollar started to roll over, then you got this rally in stocks and equities. And that is really, really interesting and phenomenal to watch intraday. Um, but overall, let's take a look at the US two-year yield because that is going to be a pivotal, pivotal signal for the markets in the coming days. Now, what's so critical about this weekly or this potential breakout in yields is tomorrow's confirmation. If yields can close back above this pivot high, you've confirmed a technical breakout on yields. And where does that likely send you to? Well, that likely implies that the US 10 year or US two year yield has a probability of getting to 5.1% in a kind of a blow off move. And that would be really, really insane for the markets considering the treasury would be pretty much, I think, bankrupt and the interest payments on the US debt would just the interest alone would be higher than the social security payments. So I'm watching for a potential technical breakout on yields. Um, but needless to say, what a tremendous powerful surge on yields. Why I'm looking at these levels up here, they do correlate with the calculated math number, but there's also a technical level that I'm watching. There's a weekly gap fill that goes all the way back to 2007 at 4.87 or 4.85. So that is going to be a key, key area that is more likely to get to versus this technical weekly gap fill, so at 5.11. So the 4.85 is pretty likely that we get there if we confirm. I would say it's about an 80% chance of seeing this 4.8 level if we can confirm tomorrow, um, especially since this is looking like it would be, yet again, another weekly uh, confirmation of a potential breakout. So. Uh, well, it would set us up next week for a potential weekly confirmed breakout if we can confirm above this level. So lots of action, lots of things to continue to monitor. Um, keep in mind, although we're getting a massive, massive bounce in the markets, this is still a, a very, very tricky time to be invested because it was really weird to see the US to Europe, but the dollar down. You know, if we look at the longer end yields, they were actually a little bit better. They, they reversed off the highs. They made a new pierce and they pierced the highs, but they didn't take out the previous highs, which is really interesting to know that the long end yields are not performing as sharply as the short end yield. So the short end yield is pretty much what the Fed fund rate has to get to. The long end yields are, are also very critical because they affect, it just shows you how broken the, the system is by having the yield curve inverted so much, so much. You know, the fact that the US two year yield exploded more than the long end yields just makes the inversion even worse, which identifies a broken, broken system as the yield curve is inverted. Let's take a look at gold. Gold, we're still accumulating gold in some longs. Gold, fantastic, fantastic price action. 
Um, it did get a flush down. It held key support right at the 1642. You can see we had it on our level already, which is just amazing to see. Um, gold actually still closed inside this range. So technically speaking now, if gold can surmount a little bit of a move upside, then it does favor potentially a short-term breakout. Um, we did pick up a little bit of Newmont today as well. Um, so Newmont, we're holding that as a long, it's our mining exposure and you can see the beautiful, beautiful ad level at $40.22. Clinical, clinical, clinical. Uh, basically, this is a pretty big accumulation base, trading in a little bit of range, and now we brought in our average. I don't even think that's adjusted yet, but nonetheless, a beautiful entry there to add to our new mining play. If you take a look at silver, we did accumulate some more silver as well, SLV, so that brought in our average as well, Pan American Silver. Um, couple things that we're shorting now again CELH so we just covered this for a beautiful beautiful 12% gain today um, you can see that it had a beautiful rally off of our cover zone and the fact that it had we covered it for 12% gain and it already rallied at the highs another 9% 8.5% is pretty crazy considering that this technical bearish pattern is still in effect you have an inside bar bearish consolidation um, accompanied by a topping head and shoulders formation. So this is key. This is a, a key prime opportune setup yet again to accumulate a quality high technical probability short trade after we just made a lovely 12% on it. And I just want to say congratulations to the one trade. This is our biggest winner of 2022, Cannabis Technologies. Been holding this probably since the beginning of September and just slowly accumulating, but um, Cannabis Technologies is the marijuana breathalyzer company. And we started accumulating down here, issuing some buy, order, some buy orders, and have we not been rewarded? I mean, this is an epic, epic move by Cannabis Technologies. We netted about 58% was the total profit there um, on the trade, which is just an epic, epic gain. It has been my big, it is my biggest winner of 2022 so far. Basically in two weeks, we netted 58% uh, on this trade so fantastic fantastic move you can see you're right into this down sloping resistance um, what i'm watching for on a technical basis now is if we can confirm a potential breakout tomorrow um, then there's a likely scenario that this has more upside probably to about potentially um, you have some major resistance let me just throw in some volume you have some major resistance coming in at around um, the 6850 level so that's going to be a big big level of resistance but nonetheless you are technically into resistance and after a big sharp move like this you would naturally expect a pullback but if it does confirm look for potentially for us to buy a pullback zone into a level of support again for potential another squeeze to the upside um, what else can I talk about today oh yeah we covered our our crypto shorts one of the reasons why is bitcoin's price action obviously looking bullish with the markets so bitcoin was a failed breakdown now it's looking to be a potential breakout so i'm not playing this level potentially yet one of the reasons why is you're still stuck underneath the main resistance point here the secondary trend line of resistance you're looking to potentially close above it today and then which potentially sets up confirmation tomorrow but you're still under key levels you're kind of now in this no man's land again and Bitcoin has had a pretty big reversal from the lows here. I mean, if we simply measure this reversal, it's a 7% reversal. So um, I'm not going to be chasing Bitcoin at this point in time. But nonetheless, right into our, our break even level, we closed a trade. We did make a little bit on Ethereum because I closed it early, but it is into our break even level on Bitcoin and it is recapturing some supports here which potentially means that if you get a little bit of consolidation on Bitcoin, you could look for a move up, which we would likely play. So be ready for potentially a crypto alert. But at this point in time, um, if Bitcoin puts in this bottoming tail, I'm gonna look for a 50% retrace and then looking to start accumulating. One of the reasons why is we can now have a major hard stop loss right below these pivots, which would exit us out of a trade in the event it started going against us. So the risk to reward, you have a tight range, a tight stop loss level of support to trade against and potentially a lot more upside. So the risk to reward favors a good trade setup. Um, overall, tremendous, tremendous day. Um, this was kind of what the markets always do. You would expect 
that even though inflation the headline came down slightly, core went up, ra interest rates rallied and surged um, to new highs, you would expect the markets to have stayed lower considering adjusting that the bond market is implying a more hawkish Fed, you know, considering the two-year yield is substantially higher when it was today than it was yesterday. So naturally, I do think the markets will reprice lower after this potential squeeze. There is options X next week. So I think there were a lot of puts in this market that got burned today, which is why we saw the markets just continuing to move higher, higher, higher. Um, so that was a, a pretty good opportunity to make some money and bring our accounts to new highs. And yes, we did do that. So congrats on the trades today. It was an epic, epic, busy, busy day. And uh, stay tuned for more action tomorrow. It's going to be interesting to see if these markets can hold most of these gains heading in tomorrow. It is looking like a pretty substantial um, move on the spiders. You did have an epic amount of shares. You had this uh, 146 million today. So that is substantially above the average. So a pretty impressive reversal. Basically, this reversal negated one, two, three of the last trading sessions on high volume. That does imply that this is a short term level to trade against as well. But in the grand scheme of things, these markets will go lower. Um, even if we start getting inflation numbers lower, uh, the markets really haven't priced in the second phase of this bear market, which is going to be uh, a couple a couple different factors that really combine to be one horrific event, which is unemployment upticking as a result of the delinquencies that could potentially happen. We have not seen these no profit, no revenue, you know, zombie companies go out of business yet like they're supposed to. So the natural trend is still down. The markets and the media are going to pump this rally up higher, get retail to come in, jump back in, probably squeeze this market up a little bit more. And then I think the Fed will come out and start whacking this market and trying to jawbone it back down. It's likely that we're going to, based off of the bond price action today, it's likely we're going to get a 0.75% hike in the Fed fund rate as opposed to a 0.5% um, unless that changes in the Fed fund rates over the next two weeks, which it could. Um, right now, we have to assume that the Fed is going to be extremely hawkish at the November meeting as well as um, implying a 0.75% hike. So that's it for today's video. Um, congrats again, and we'll see you on the charts tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Please give this video a big like down below.